All right, we've explained what point defects look like in metals with vacancies and interstitials. How do they look different in ceramics and polymers? Let's start with ceramics first. So vacancies and interstitials are still possible in ceramics, but it gets more complicated because we have both anion and cations possible in ceramics, right? These have charge, and because they have charge, your defects must always come in pairs, right? They always come in pairs, right? Now remember, the cation is typically small and the anion is large. Therefore, um, anion interstitials are not very likely because you've got this really big, say it's an oxygen anion. Now you've got this huge oxygen anion that you have to stuff into the lattice. How likely do you think that's going to be? Probably not very likely. So vacancies uh, are going to be much more likely. Okay. Um, this leads us to something we can call the defect structure, and this describes the types and the concentrations of defects that are, that are present, right? Now remember, electroneutrality says that the positive and negative charges have to balance, right? You have to have electroneutrality, right? And therefore, defects come in pairs. We'll show you a couple examples. Two of the most common examples in ceramics are Frankel defects and Schottky defects, right? Frankel's named after Yakov Frankel, who's a Soviet. Uh, 1926, uh, and here's how it works. It's a cation vacancy and a cation interstitial, right? This is caused by thermal vibrations. Basically, the atom was on its, its spot to start with, and then it got knocked out of its spot and into an interstitial, right? So again, the two defects are the spot that it left, now you've got this vacancy, and the new site being occupied, that's the self-interstitial. That's different than the Schottky defect. A Schottky defect, named after Walter Schottky, a German in the 1920s, he basically said, okay, a cation vacancy can be mitigated by an anion vacancy. You have to maintain the right stoichiometric ratio. So if it's like an Al2O3 compound, you have two aluminums vacant, then you have to have three oxygens vacant, right, to have the, the stoichiometry met. Um, and again, these vacancies are now free to move. It reduces the crystal density. Um, okay, so let's, let's take a look at these. Which one's which in this picture here? Well... Let's take, a put, let's take a look here on the left, right? On the left, you had an ion, this red one, that occupied this site. But it left that site, right? And it came and it's occupied an interstitial site somewhere else, right? Same thing over here. You had a red cation right there. And let's say it moved and now it's over there. So those would both be examples of Frankel defects. On the other hand, let's take a look over here. Here you had a red cation and you had a green anion, but both of those have been removed. So now you've got one vacancy of a cation and one vacancy of an anion. So over here you have a Schottky, and this would be a Frankel. So however you want to remember those is up to you. I think Frankel, Frank's kind of a creepy name. It's like somebody who doesn't respect your personal space, and this cation sitting in that interstitial is not respecting the personal space of the atoms that are around it. So that would be an example of a Frankel defect as opposed to a Schottky defect. Okay, how about this question? What would a point defect look like in a polymer? Well, here's two examples. On the top one here, we have Teflon, right? It's a carbon backbone going all the way across here. And on the side groups, you've got fluorines. But take a look at one of these uh, Mer units. This one right here, instead of having two fluorines above and two fluorines below, it has two hydrogens, right? And those hydrogens means that that mer unit is no longer a Teflon polytetrafluoroethylene, it's polyvinylidene fluoride, right? PVDF. So somebody stuck a PVDF mer into an otherwise PTFE chain. So that individual mer unit can be thought of as a point defect. It happens at one spot where there's the wrong monomer ended up in there. Same thing over here. Take a look at this one. Here you've got a chain of PVC, polyvinyl chloride, but take a look at this. What's different about that? Well, on all these, the chlorine was coming off of the first carbon in the Murray unit, but here it's coming off the second one. So this would be, for example, if this was head, tail, then this would be tail, head. So instead of connecting from tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, we end up with head to tail, and then going head to tail, tail to tail, okay? So that's an example of another point defect where the molecular configuration can be offset by one of these MERS getting put in backwards.